Hey everybody, welcome back over here to 3D Distributed. We got another video for you today. Seeing what's going on in the shop. All right, Shane, what do we got for us today? Okay, so we made some changes with the workhorse printer, uh, mostly because of logistics issues. Um, one of the first changes is, uh, so, so originally, Originally, we, we used brass bearings or brass bushings. Yeah, I'll, show you, I'll show you right yeah. here what he's talking about. We are talking about these bushings right over here that the, the lead screw goes on. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, old Y axis idler right here. But uh, yeah, so, so originally we went with these. And the problem with these is we had trouble, uh, basically, we, one thing, we had to manufacture them, then we had to press fit them, and there was always issues with the hole being a little bit too small or a little bit too big. Uh, if it's too small, it doesn't turn right, and if it's too big, um, basically, you get a little, a little bit of wobble in there, which creates resonance through the lead screw, which affects the quality of your print. Plus, it makes the printer uh, a little bit, a little bit on the noisy side. So we switched over to these idlers. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry he's talking about right there. Yeah, so, so idler we, bearings. So yeah, we yeah, press yeah, fit in there. Yeah, yeah. So we switched over to these uh, flange bearings uh, for the idlers, and uh, this worked out great. Printer's lock, you know, much more quiet. It fixed uh, basically the little problem with it having resonance uh, because it was too loose. So this fits in there just right. So that, that worked out great. Uh, the problem was when we originally switched over to this, uh, I didn't have a hard time finding them. I just bought them on Amazon, right? Uh, that seller doesn't have them anymore. Uh, so I went to go source them out from another seller, uh, which I bought for before, and uh, they didn't have them either. So I did a bunch of research, could not find them. Uh, people had them in their catalog, they were out of stock. Uh, checked, checked for a few hours. Uh, I found one company that had them. They only had three. It was supposed to be two day shipping and it turned into two week shipping. Uh, and I bought the last three. So, so that, that's a big issue. Uh, I really like these flange bearings. Um, it, it has a 10 millimeter ID and the OD is 19 millimeter. But the, but the OD doesn't really matter. I mean, what, what matters is that we get a 10 millimeter ID for a 10 millimeter lead screw. And, uh, that is not easily available. So, so, so needless to say, we have had to find other solutions. Yeah, so, uh, Woo, sorry, Bruce. Yeah, all you guys, apparently, there, there's lots of Bruce fans. So, yeah, he's still here <laughs> underfoot. So, so, anyways, uh, so we took a regular bearing and, uh, we're gonna make it. This is a little, little prototype, but. Uh, basically, this is going to screw down straight to the gantry plate, so we'll, we'll see how that works. But the dial bearings are, are pretty good, uh, the flange bearings are great, but the, I mean, if they're not available, they're not available, so uh, until we find another source, we're going to go with something like this. We we're we might make this out of metal, we might keep it 3 print. Um, we'll see. we'll see how it goes. So th that's one of the things, uh, the changes for the workhorse printer. Uh, another thing, we actually changed our z-axis lead screw we were using some uh some basic uh, acme lead screw from china and uh i, I guess we were using it because it was cheap and you know we thought lead screw was lead screw um but we were getting some issues uh in the z-axis so i found these this is just mcmaster car um this is really nice lead screw though. We might find, we might start getting lead screw from IGES if we can get them to actually ship it to us. Um, so I'm happy with this. Uh, it's got a, uh, I think it's a black oxide coating, some kind of coating in it. But this is really nice. The problem with this is expensive. Uh, the lead screw is, it's about $25 each. But the lead screw nuts also like $25 each. So, so you're looking at like a hundred bucks right here just for the Z axis. So I'm not too crazy about that. Um, right now, you know, we're just going with it because I mean, it is a nice printer and uh, might as well use nice parts. And I mean, the, the quality on this lead screw is pretty, pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, also, we used to use uh, Imperial units. So we used a uh, half inch uh, Acme thread um, with an eighth inch pitch. Uh, we're now using a 13 millimeter lead screw. Okay, so we're trying to go metric on everything. 
And the reason why we're going metric on everything is because uh, we're using the Duet Wi-Fi and the firmware, everything, everything's in millimeters, right? So when we go with uh, Imperial units, basically there's more processing. You don't have uh, nice solid numbers. Um, so basically when, when you do your layer height, you want to you want to keep your lead screw pitch millimeters because uh, basically the layer height because everything's in millimeters because most printers print in millimeters. Um, basically, you have really nice even solid numbers. Okay, uh, what we were running into is we were having like you know uh, trailing decimal places uh, to get to actually get the, the quality of one. Okay, so we would actually have to do some math. We'd have to go to uh, the Prusa website. And uh, use the Prusa calculator to actually calculate. You know, if we had 0.1, if we were doing like a 0.1 layer height for 0.2, we had to figure out how many steps per millimeter it had to go, and uh, it, it was a bunch of dumb stuff like that. Uh, it was just one more step that we had to take. <coughs> so we switched over to 13 millimeter. So um, we're also with this better lead screw. We're hoping to get better quality. Uh, one thing we also might do is we might switch over to using servos on the z-axis uh, Just to just to ensure repeatability. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to print a part for 80 hours or 60 hours and uh, and Have it fail. Okay, so you gotta think um, Yeah, servos cost more, but you're actually making an investment if you're gonna have better quality parts and uh, ensure reliability um, you know what you spend extra fifty bucks or whatever, hundred bucks. So we're pretty happy with that. Let me get over here while you're taking that off of there. Yeah. So this is with the Imperial units right here, and this is I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, there's I mean there's a couple of flaws in it. Most of it's software. But we really want to do, uh, also, the, the plastic temperature might have been a little hot if you kind of look at the, the glaze that's on it a little bit. But what you really want to look at is the bands and everything right here. And if you were to hold that up to the lead screw right here, you'd see that these layer lines actually, actually layer lines, uh, the distance of them, actually match the, the pitch of the lead screw. If you were to hold these side by side, you would notice that they actually match. Uh, so that's that's the reason why we're taking a little bit more um, attention to the uh, z-axis because we're trying to improve the quality of our, our layers. Um, another thing we're going to do, uh, this is an older unit, but we're going to start preloading the z-axis lead screw too. So we're, uh, we're going to spend extra attention and uh, trying to get the, our Z axis just right so we can get those layers looking beautiful. Yeah, put it right there where you had it. So you can see those striations there. Yeah. Not too bad. I mean, see a bunch of fingerprints all over it now, too. But yeah. You can see all those striations there. I mean, overall, it's a good print. It, it could be better. A lot of that slicer software, we just updated our, our slicer software. And uh, it's, it's a new profile. So, but I mean, Overall, I think the the print looks good. We're just trying to make it better. Uh, we're also trying to make it more reliable too. Repeatability, repeatability, repeatability. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is we changed the bed. So. Originally, the, the first couple of workhorses, well, the very first workhorse had a glass bed. Um, well, we're not doing that again. <laughs> um, and in the second workhorse, we, uh, we had a 3 8 aluminum plate. And it worked good for us, but somehow we bent the plate. I don't know if somebody crashed the printer into the bed and bent it. Or I don't know if when we were machining it, we accidentally somehow didn't clamp it down just right. And so, somehow the bed ended up bowed. Maybe, maybe it was like that to begin with. Uh, we didn't really notice it. Uh, when we first got the bed in, the material for the bed, uh, we checked it with a straight edge. Looked pretty straight, but um, after using it for about three months, I noticed uh, there was something off. 
and I put a straight edge on it and it was bowed. I don't know how, it was 3 8 fit. So, <clears throat> so we, we switched over to a half inch fit bed, right? Now the half inch fit bed, we, did, we didn't bend it, we didn't bow it, okay? Uh, but the problem with the half inch bed was, uh, you know, originally we didn't have a heat bed. So, problem with the half inch heat bed is that half inch plate would take forever to heat up. So, we're, we're, we're actually at the point where we're actually wanting to uh, have all of our printers have heat beds on. Um, for the most part, we've been printing in PLA, but now we want to start experimenting with uh, PETG and nylon and all kinds of fancy uh, different types of filament. So uh, the problem with half inch is uh, Will came up with a really good heat bed system. Uh, it's kind of complicated, it's uh, a little expensive, and um, for right now, we're, we're starting to get people we're starting to get people actually wanting to buy printers, uh, like the actual assembly printers, and want heat beds on them. So we, we have to figure out a solution. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, right now, until we get Will's uh, heat bed developed, is we're going to start using the Kinovo uh, silicone heat pads. Now I was totally against this. That's because at first all we had was 12 volt and 24 volt uh, silicone heat pads, and I was totally against that because I was concerned. You know, originally we had a half inch, um, we had a half inch bed, right? So I was worried about it taking 30 minutes, an hour to heat up. Okay, last thing you want to do is, hey, I'm gonna go print something. You go fire up the printer and have to wait an hour for the heat bed. Again. Um, I'm kind of impatient. Like, basically when I want to print something, like, I have a hard time waiting for the hide to heat up, okay? I can't even imagine, like, waiting an hour, you know, 30 minutes an hour for the, uh, for the bed to heat up. So, <clears throat> this is the Kinovo silicone heat pads. And... If you're familiar with the forums or building printers, you've probably heard of these guys. These, these are the guys who make pretty much any kind of heat pad that you want. Okay, so this is a silicone heat pad. Um, now the thing I like about this is it's simple. Um, now this isn't this right here. We're gonna have to use a solid state relay, so we shouldn't have to worry about uh, how long it's gonna take. And we can get this any size we want to. Uh, this bed is a little bit, it looks like it doesn't cover up the whole heat bed. That's because there's also an extrusion that goes right here and right here. And then we have a bunch of insulation, insulating it. So this actually covers up. Um, so the workhorse printer has a uh, 650 millimeter by 350 millimeter wide uh, print bed. So these are 350 wide right here. So I'm pretty happy. I'm actually I'm actually really excited about these. So and they just got 3M on the back of them. You just stick them right on, huh? It, yeah, exactly. Uh, also, the aluminum plate we're using, we were using uh, casted uh, aluminum, and this this aluminum plate right here is actually made for uh, tool jigs and fixtures, okay? So this has got a really nice surface. It's got these lines on here. That's because that's because it's uh, it's been uh, processed. But this has got a really nice surface. I actually think that looks pretty cool too. Is that going? Hi. <laughs> you comb your hair, <laughs> right? So I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, this is, I gotta be honest, I've, we, we've ordered a few um, different types of plates to use for, uh, for a heat bed. And I gotta say, this is the nicest quality that I've seen. It's definitely shiny. 
You can you can kind of see your reflection. Yeah. Okay, so this is from Midwest Aluminum and Steel. And uh, basically, they have a really nice website, and you can order this. Th this right here was about 80 bucks, so not too bad. And the, the quality on this is just nice. I mean, that that is... This is the nicest plate of aluminum I've ordered for for a heat bed, so I'm pretty satisfied. And here, let me see. What... No wonder I can't find any more sharpies in the shop today. They're all in here. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, uh. Let me see. Dude, did I order it from Midwest? Or did I get from Trident? Okay, well, whatever. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, definitely a nice, nice piece of plate here. And that's how it got bent the last time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so it's just got this uh, three M adhesive uh, pad on here, and basically we'll just stick it on like that, and like this, and we. Have